Welcome guys to another episode of TEW, WWE Modern Day. If you're excited for the series, smash the like button. Um, I haven't really played it for a couple of weeks. Um, I've been streaming a lot on Twitch. Um, I enjoy playing live. Go to the description. I play it for a lot and um, you'll probably see me there. So right, let's get on to the show. We kick off with a segment where The Miz says 2022 is not going to be the year of AJ Styles. It's going to be the year of Miz and it's going to be awesome. And he hates AJ Styles. 69. This angle got the shelf to a strong start and it got the crowd hotter. Exactly what I wanted. And then we have the blow off in the feud between Rhea Ripley and Alexa Bliss. I've enjoyed this story. It's gone on for a few weeks and went on past the pay-per-view a bit longer than I expected. And I didn't have any space for it on the pay-per-view, so I've done it on Raw. So Rhea Ripley picks up the win. I'm a big fan of both. Um, Alexa Bliss is better on the mic. I believe she's more over. I think Rhea Ripley needed the win. And Cody has a match against Theory. 59, Cody 6. 52. Cody wins in 14 minutes with his finisher and then after the match Cody gets on the microphone and he says start winning stop moaning Kevin Owens 61 that was not as good as I thought it was going to be actually says Kevin Owens did not do well without a script to follow that's a bit bollocks but can't win them all then we have a match where Bobby Lashley beats T-Bar Bobby Lashley 59, T-Bar 34. I believe T-Bar's pop's about 25, so he's performing about 10 above weight. She ain't bad. I think Bobby Lashley's popularity is around 60, so that's not too bad either. Anyway, it's more about the segment after the match, where Bobby Lashley, he accepts Seth Rollins' challenge for the United States Championship at the next pay-per-view. And then we have a segment... Bailey says there's no stopping her. She is on the roll and she is going to take Bianca Belair's title. 58, not bad. And then we have a match. Randy Orton, 69. Dolph Ziggler, 49. 66, very good. And then after the match, one last match, says Randy. He is practically... This riddle, he's annoying me. He keeps asking for a match. I'm going to give him one. It's his last one. I'm going to beat him and then move on to better things. And then we have a three on three. We have Finn Balor and DIY defeat Edge and the Street Profits in 17 minutes when Johnny Gargano submitted Angler Dawkins with a cross cab. Yeah, so practically I integrated the two storylines. So I put Finn Balor and Edge are practically feuding. So I put them with Champa and Gargano who are feuding with Spreet Profits. I thought the match would be a bit better, but because of the low pop, maybe um maybe that's why. Edge only fifty nine. A bit discerning, but we're heading towards two matches. Oh shit. Balor says Edge is finished. I am going to end his career, he says, and I will beat him at the next pay-per-view. Only 64. I think this show's bombed. I think this show's done really badly. 60. Oh my god, that might be our worst show. I think we need to start booking more noteworthy matches. There was a lot of squash matches on the show, but that main event really did not deliver. Looking at the match ratings, we should have had Randy Orton and Dolph Ziggler as the main event. But we didn't really look at it that way. We look at it more story development. And I've just realised I've not booked AJ Styles and The Miz. Oh, I did. I didn't put AJ Styles in the match, which I was going to do. Very, very disappointing by me. But yeah guys, um, that show was shit, but if, if you've enjoyed the video, smash the like button, and um, have a good day.